you are listening to an episode rewind. Last week we did episode 80 and it was all about inflammation. However, episode 67 was also about inflammation. I think it's super, super important that we really understand how inflammation works in the body, how it affects how we feel and how we live and how well we are. Inflammation is not a horrible thing, but when it is chronic, it can lead to so many other conditions. If you want to feel well and be well, I really encourage you to listen to this rewind episode. You can follow that up with episode 80 from last week, which is about an hour long. And you can also listen to another episode that is all about anti-inflammatory foods and different things that we can eat. My belief is all three of these these episodes are jam-packed with information on how we can feel well by lowering inflammation in the body and eating a, a diet that is conducive to that because inflammation is the underlying cause of so many chronic conditions and illnesses, especially autoimmunity. So if that is something that you are trying to avoid listening to this episode, I hope that it's helpful. Also, if this is helpful to maybe it's someone in your family or a friend that you know that struggles with some sort of chronic inflammation, send this episode to them or send some of the other ones to them and hopefully it can be something that can help them, help them to be empowered in the dis- the decisions that they make about their own wellness. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me on Instagram. I would love to know what you're getting from any of these episodes, but especially the ones about inflammation. All right, let's hop in. You're listening to episode 67 of the Style and Stewardship Podcast. In this episode, I'm talking about something that we all have experienced. If you're a human being listening to this podcast, then you have experienced this, and it is inflammation. Whether that is you had a cold or you got hurt when you were a kid and you are having a stuffy or runny nose because it's colder flu season, we've all experienced some sort of inflammation. And inflammation is not all bad, but I wanted to talk about how our body is giving us clues through inflammation that something else may be going on. And you guessed it, I am going to share with you some of the things that we may be consuming on a regular basis that are contributing to inflammation in our bodies. Like I said, it's not all bad, but I definitely want to give you the full picture in this episode. So if you're interested in finding out ways to combat inflammation that is chronic, this episode is for you. You're listening to the Style and Stewardship Podcast. This podcast is for the woman who wants to hear, well done. Before we get into this episode, I definitely want to just go ahead and do a medical disclaimer. Nothing that I share on this podcast or on this particular episode is to treat, cure, or diagnose any medical condition, please take all of those concerns that you may have to your doctor. I am not an expert. (laughs) I am not a doctor. I am just someone who is sharing things for informational purposes only. So please consult your doctor. So what is inflammation? So inflammation, as simply as I can put it off the top of my head, is our body's immune response. And it's one of the main ones that our body uses. So say I get a cut. My body's immune system is going to respond to that by creating some sort of inflammation. And there are two different inflammation mediators, which literally mean that these hormones are used to tell the immune system to send out some helpers that is going to show up in your body as things like swelling. We have all experienced that at some point, or your the feeling of heat in the area that is also swelling. When our body is creating this inflammation due to some sort of bacteria or injury or virus, it does this So it can get helpers to that location as soon as possible. So inflammation in this sense is a very, very good thing. It is the way that God created our bodies to fight against foreign invaders and to heal things that may have happened to the skin or bone or any other injury that the body may have 
um, been exposed to. And it's interesting because, you know, when you first, when it first happens, when you first get swelling, you think, oh, this is really, really bad. Or, you know, you, a child has a fever and you think this is really, really bad. Those things are all created and they all happen because the body is fighting. The, the body is literally fighting. And this inflammation is evidence that it is trying to heal a certain area. And when something swells, it's because a lot of fluid was brought to that particular area. And this is a good thing because the body is bringing all of these cells to heal as quickly as possible, whatever pain, virus, or thing has been inflicted on the body. So inflammation is not a bad thing. It is your body's first line of defense outside of your skin, you know, which is your actually your body's first as far as getting things inside the skin. But we have different things all throughout our bodies that keep us from um, viruses and bacteria from setting up shop in our bodies. We can get into T cells and all of those other things, but right now we're talking specifically about inflammation. So say you uh, you go outside and you have really terrible allergies like I do. <laughs> um, or if my husband goes outside to cut the grass, he has to take a Claritin. He has to wear almost an entire face shield. If not, his eyes will be almost swollen shut. His nose is inflamed. His throat will begin to get itchy and scratchy. And we've all experienced this on some level, whether, you know, we were sick as a kid or, We've um, encountered some sort of allergen. Speaking of allergies specifically, this is immune an immune response that your the mucous membranes in your nose, for example, literally will create more fluid and swell, which is why we get a stuffy nose. It's not that our nose is necessarily stuffed up. It's that the passageways to us breathing through our nose, our nostrils, have been impeded by the swelling of this lymph tissue in the back of our nose. And we have that, and we know we have that in our nose and in our throat and in our, um, this is why you go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, because this is all lymph tissue. And our body will swell and send extra fluid, which will, if you're eating, I'm sorry, (laughs) Um, mucus to that area. And mucus is literally trying to clean and irrigate that area. The nose is swelling in response to this because it is your body's way of fighting something. The body is an incredible, incredible thing. And God created our bodies in such a way that we literally have built in systems, aka the immune system, to mitigate threats, basically. So inflammation in and of itself is not a bad thing. When we're talking about inflammation that is not, um, when we're talking about inflammation that's chronic rather, that is continuing on for an extended period of time, This can kind of, sort of, sometimes for certain people cause really, really horrible issues in the body. And this can also lead to some autoimmune conditions. And we know of some of them off the top of my head. Rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis is definitely one where you've got this chronic inflammation at the joints and it is extremely painful because there's no, I mean, the, the body can't, the body can only fight so long until it is completely fatigued. And when we have things like autoimmune responses, that is our body literally beginning to fight itself in different areas of the body. And since our cells are all over every part of our bodies, this is going to show up differently for different people. When you throw in genes and and things like that, there's certain things that in DNA, there are certain things that some of us are predisposed to. Um, And when it comes into you know, where we live and what we're exposed to in our environment from chemicals to 
so many different things that we are constantly exposed to. If our body cannot rid itself of these things and they stay along, they stay around and it's repeated exposure again and again and again, many times a chronic condition ensues. So this means you constantly have this issue. And it's a lot of times why, you know, if someone has something, say, IB, like IBS, for example, that is a chronic condition and it is affecting every single part of their lives. If someone has rheumatoid arthritis, this is going to impact any time they need to move or, um, you know, work with their hands. If it's in their, their knuckles and in their joints, um, you know, some people have it in their wrists, you know, like carpal tunnel and, you know, in the back, it can happen anywhere where there's bone and joint and areas where fluid can build. So we know what it we are aware of what inflammation is, even if we don't call it that, or we necessarily talk about it. Inflammation is what it's painful. It's painful because of all of the fluid that's sent to these tissues that inflame it. When this happens, it presses against the nerves and this sends a signal to our brain and causes pain. So when we talk about inflammation, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, there's, I mean, in the wellness world, you hear a lot about inflammatory foods and what to eat and what not to eat, which I'm going to touch on in just a moment. But I just wanted to start by saying we've all encountered inflammation. We've all experienced inflammation and whether we knew it or not, inflammation was a good thing when it is acute and not chronic, which means it just happened for a time being until healing occurred or until the threat was no longer a threat to our bodies. So whether that was our body, we sneezed and sneezed and we had a runny nose and our body moved all of that bacteria and all of that virus out because the immune system was able to function and to just mitigate this problem and get rid of it. And our body and the hormones were able to mediate these through those inflammatory responses and get rid of these things. So That's great, right? That is absolutely awesome. God made our bodies in such a way and it is amazing. It boggles the mind. When we're talking about chronic inflammation and we're talking about autoimmunity, where the body begins to attack itself in some way, shape, or form, we're talking about something that has gone beyond the body's ability to deal with and to relieve. This means that many of us have chronic conditions. And when we talked about inflammation, we can't talk about inflammation without talking about pain. And so many people, you know, are taking things like NSAIDs, which are um, things like ibuprofen, which are anti-inflammatories. You know, we know this. And we take these things sometimes flippantly. I have a headache. I'm taking this, not knowing that many times what we are taking in are actually making our issues worse. So it is amazing to have over the counter medicines. It is amazing to be able to put a topical cream on our skin when we're experiencing maybe a flare of eczema or things like that. Or we have a bug bite and, you know, we have that itchiness that, um, you know, that the little bit of venom that certain insects give off and our body sends those same mediators like histamine to that, that it, it literally, histamine literally is a hormone that tells your body, hey, we need to create inflammation over there, get fluid over there, get all of our white cells and get everything over there to fight whatever this little um, bite is or whatever it is. We know that that's a good thing. But when we are in a chronic state of inflammation, most of the time, unless you are taking something, you're also in a chronic state of pain. This may show up in really overt ways, but this can also show up in very minute ways that you may not even realize. When we're talking about food, food, I truly believe is and should be one of the things that we take very seriously 
just for the simple fact that when our body is getting what it needs, when it has an inflammatory response that it needs to make to, you know, get rid of whatever issue, virus, or bacteria that it may be, you know, (laughs) threatened by, it can do what it needs to do. So when we have vitamins and, and minerals and we have phytonutrients and things that are actually anti-inflammatory naturally, we don't have to reach for that medicine as much. Our body can do what it needs to do without a stimulant or without being forced to basically dull symptoms to fight whatever this thing is, to reduce the swelling and all of these things. One of the things that we are doing on a very, very consistent basis, if you're in the U.S., I was looking and I see there are people that are not in the U.S. that listen to this podcast. That is so amazing. Um, I'm so glad that you're here. That is awesome. In the U.S., we have a lot of fast foods. And we've even, I don't know if you've watched any shows or documentaries where, you know, it'll be something like, you know, this this population or this culture and this area of the world was super healthy until they started eating like Americans, basically, until they started adopting Western foods, like fast food places that popped up over there, major chains and franchises we don't even need to get into because for the most part, they all do the same thing, which is deep fry things in oils that really, we're going to get into that in a second. I'm jumping ahead. Or packaged foods. If you're eating a ton of packaged foods, we are opening ourselves up to a lot of inflammation. And sometimes it is so low grade and so minute that it's not a major sneezing attack like I have, or it might not be, you know, an inflammatory response on your skin or, or dermatitis where your skin is, is having a reaction to something, or, you know, maybe in your stomach, there's some bloating going on, another form of inflammation. So when we're eating things that are in these packages and when we are taking in food that chemicals are it's almost like you pick up a package of something and it's like there might be one real food ingredient in it and then the rest is like what is all this mess what is all this what 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 is red dye number 40 and blue like this and you know um BHT and BHA and petroleum derived ingredients and preservatives and we're taking in all of this stuff guess what It's not benign. The body has to do something with it and the body does do something with it. So when we're talking about inflammation, depending on what this food that we have ingested is in quote unquote inflaming, it may be going on on an internal level. And since, you know, it's not something like we see dermatitis on our skin or we see raised bumps or, or, you know, hot, you know, our skin is hot to the touch because it's fighting some bug bite or anything like that. It may show up in different ways. It may show up in joint pain. It may show up in bloating and stomach issues. It may show, which will then affect so many other areas like our sleep, like our digestion, like the lining of our stomachs, like our Um, sinus cavities and headaches, migraines. You see where I'm going with all this? So the things that we're taking in as delicious as some of them may be, I always, always, always want to encourage you to eat real whole food as close to its natural state as you possibly can, because that is where our body is getting what it needs to do these processes. And the more we can help our body naturally do that, the less we need to rely on more (laughs) man-made, I'm thankful for them, Um, but man-made chemicals to quote unquote deal with our symptoms. Because I mean, we all know this, when we take something for headache or or for stomach ache or, or things like that, it's just another chemical. And what happens is if we are chronically using chemicals to do what the body should be doing, then we are harming ourselves more than we are helping ourselves. So, 
So we really have to um, recognize that inflammation is a process and it's an immune response to help our bodies. However, being in a chronic state of inflammation, low grade or otherwise, can be really, really taxing on the body. We want our bodies to feel as well as they possibly can. I know I do. I'm raising my hand. And when we feel terrible, we don't show up in a way that I know we would like to. There are times where, you know, I've had a horrible night of sleep because I have a small child that doesn't like to stay in his own bed. Anyways, um, I'm like, you are not sleeping in here. Sorry. Okay. All my parents understand. But, you know, you just... You, you wake up and you're groggy, you reach for the coffee, which isn't a terrible thing. And, you know, because some of us look forward to their coffee the night before. I go to sleep and I'm like, I am excited about my time in the morning, drinking my cup of coffee, having some alone time, waking up really early so I can, you know, wake up before my kid does. I'm just saying, can I get a witness? But, you know, you just really really are groggy and you feel terrible or you're grouchy, you don't really respond in the best way. And you most certainly don't deal with stress, you know, from a really good place when your body is taxed because it hasn't gotten the rest that it needs. Sometimes we don't get the rest that we need because our body is not getting the nutrients that it needs. Sometimes we're tired all the time because our body hasn't had anything that it calls real food or recognizes as real food. So inflammation, when it comes to what we're eating, there are certain things that cause inflammation that we know of. One of the main things being seed oils and quote unquote, so-called vegetable oils. Let's take French fries, for example. If you're, if this is the first time you've ever listened to the podcast, I really, really like French fries. The main reason why I got an air fryer was so I could make my own, so I could feel a little better about it. (laughs) And I do actually. But French fries are like one of my favorite foods, seriously. And when we think about going to, say, a fast food restaurant, The oil that these fries are fried in can literally be used to run vehicles. And many times they are made with the most prominent oil of all. There are three actually, but the one that you're going to see most often because we have been lied to as as consumers is canola. And canola, oh, it's a healthy oil. It was actually promoted as that. The interesting thing about canola oil, though, not only is it found in everything from pasta sauce to ketchup to condiments to salad dressings to the fries that your fries are deep um, to, you know, fried foods that your um, French fries and other fast food things are deep fried in. Restaurants use this even on in pans to fry things because of the high smoke point. Canola oil is actually originally from a plant called rapeseed, R-A-P-E-S-E-E-D, rapeseed. This is actually not a beautiful, you know, where did you think canola oil came from? When I first heard the name, I thought it came from some, you know, really nice yellow plant and it was named canola and it probably came from someplace foreign. Um, This is what I thought years and years and years ago. But it's actually from not a flower, but a weed. So this weed, this rapeseed plant, goes through many, many, many processes and is ultra processed to get what we know as canola oil. This is added to so many things, which is why I will not drink oat milk because... It is the reason why it's creamy and 
thick. And when you go to, you know, maybe a Starbucks or a place like that, and you're like, oh, I'm going to be healthy because I'm going to get an oat milk latte. You would believe because of clever marketing, oh, it came from oats. It's healthy. One of the main ingredients in that is canola oil or rapeseed oil. And this is actually a plant that is toxic to the body. And it goes through this long, lengthy process. Within the description of this episode, I will link the video that shows you how canola oil is made. It is disturbing, but it goes through all of these processes. It is, um, after this oil is is extracted, it is then, um, they use hexane, first of all, to extract the oil from this plant. Then it goes through several processes, like having detergents added to it so that you don't get this horrible, musty, rancid, inflammatory oil smell. When we smell things and they smell off, we typically don't eat or drink them. So in order to remove this horrible smell of this item that has been processed, they add detergents, and deodorizers, which are, guess what, more chemicals. So after it goes through all of these processes, then it can be used and shipped to different places in the world to deep fry foods, shipped to companies to deep fry potato chips in, um, sent to other manufacturers to use in different ways. And what is really disturbing is that it is in almost everything. So there are several things in our in, in the U.S. that will show up on packages and in drive-thrus and it's almost impossible to get around them. So I know this. So say if I go, say if I eat something fast food wise, I, I kind of try to stick to like places that'll give me something that's a whole food. So something like a Chipotle, cause I'm like, well, I know that that's rice. <laughs> I know that that's guacamole. That's actually chicken. Those are peppers. At least, you know, I can add some vegetables to my plate. So, you know, or even beans, you know, if, if I'm not having a, an issue with those that week. So, you know, those things are still cooked in canola oil, you know, and I don't kid myself. I know that, that those, um, the peppers that I like to add to the top of my Chipotle bowl, those have been fried in canola oil. If they haven't been fried or used um, with canola oil, it is typically something like soy, corn, or if you're going to Chick-fil-A, it's peanut oil. All of these oils are used hundreds of times before this oil is recycled and used for whatever else they use it for. I've heard that it's, it can be used to, it's resold so that they can use it, um, to run certain machinery, believe it or not. And it's used hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times before it is discarded. And I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you've ever cooked with oil at home, and you've deep fried something, you know, back in the day, there was this thing that came out that my granny had to get and my mom had to get, and it was called a fry daddy. And it was a little pot that you literally could deep fry stuff with. Um, and you know, you, you would put your cooking oil in there and you would deep fry these things. And it was like, Oh, okay. You know, we can have fried food at home. <laughs> and now, you know, our time we're talking about instant pots and air fryers, which I am a owner of both. And I love them. But anyways, So, but when you deep fried something at home, what happened? You ended up with a lot of things that fell to the bottom. You had to scoop it out so it wouldn't burn, but the oil would actually, um, bubble over if you were to put something like, you know, something that was, um, flash frozen in there. And, you know, my husband deep fries a turkey every year. Thank you, God, he's Southern. Um, (laughs) Love my Southern gentleman. But he deep fries a turkey. He injects it with all these seasonings and he deep fries it. And we get usually peanut oil for that, which is super, super expensive, by the way. And I'm typically inflamed and, and my nose is stuffy and all those things. But I'm like, a couple of times a year, we are doing this and we are doing it on purpose. This podcast is definitely not not about eating perfectly. That's for sure. It's definitely about having the information so you can make the best choices so you can be your own health advocate. Anyways, so as you're deep frying these things, it would boil over. 
there's a chemical that fast food places use to keep this from happening and so that they can reuse the same or and yes i said the same the same oil over and over and over a couple of hundred times before they discard it and this chemical is the same chemical that is used to make rubber and rubber yoga mats the same chemical so we're getting all of this food and it's deep fried and don't get me wrong, it's crispy and delicious and, and I love a waffle cut fry from Chick-fil-A. I try not to do it um, very often, um, but you're not listening to someone who eats perfectly. Okay, I, I just, that's another disclaimer. I like using disclaimers, right? Just so you know. But the things that we are ingesting on a regular basis are things if we are eating from a lot of packages and from a lot of fast food places are these highly inflammatory oils that are actually toxic in our systems. The reason why we can do this is because, you know, it's like, oh, well, fast food, in my opinion, it filled the gap of wanting convenience because we started doing everything quicker and wanting everything quicker. So we wanted our food to be quick too. So our microwave and, um, which is an amazing invention, you know, the instant pot, hello, love that thing. The air fryer, we want all of these quick and convenient ways to eat, but that comes at a price and it comes at a price of inflammation. So within our bodies, the first place that this is going to cause inflammation is going to be in our stomachs. And if the inflammation doesn't happen there, it can and will move to other parts of the body if the body cannot handle the toxic inflammatory load. So just like we were talking about viruses coming into the body and bacteria coming into the body and our bodies having this immune system response of some sort of inflammatory mediator, and it couldn't get rid of it, it ends up being a chronic issue. The same goes for when we're taking in foods that are making us sick. So they're making us sick, not (laughs) cough, I chew, but they're making us sick in other ways. So that can be, you know, we have things like brain fog. We have things like You know, if you have gut issues, if you have, um, where did this thing come from that's on my skin? Or why is it that I keep getting migraines? Not me personally, I'm just speaking out loud of all the different ways. Why could I not sleep very well last night? We have all of these things. Why am I craving sugar? The body starts kind of going haywire because of the inflammation that's going on that it cannot mitigate because it is constantly getting bombarded with these chemicals and with these oils and things that lead to inflammation in the body. So this is food for thought. That pun was intended. Um, (laughs) I feel like I should put a sound effect there, but I'm not, I'm probably not going to. There are other things that cause inflammation in the body as well, but I wanted to touch on oils today because they are found in almost every single thing that we are consuming. If it's coming from a package, sometimes if it's coming from a can or a jar, from the frozen food section and from fast food places, anything that is quote unquote convenient might not necessarily be convenient for your health. And it's something that I have to tell myself when I leave the house and I'm like, you know what, Sharice, you really need to take a snack so you are not tempted to drive through the, you know, the Chick-fil-A or you're not tempted to, you know, if I have to stop and get something, I absolutely will because I'm not going to starve, but I tend to carry snacks with me, eat before I go somewhere so that I am not, you know, reaching for that fast food thing all the time, you know, maybe once a week. And I'm not saying that because I'm some sort of standard to follow. I'm just saying that because that's, that's what works best for us and for our family. So that is what I just want to encourage you to do, to do what works best for your family. But I wanted to also just give you a couple of tips of how to get around some of these things. One of the best ways to get around using a lot of these inflammatory oils is to get comfortable 
making at least one thing that you typically get from a fast food place at home. This is something that we like to do. I call it fast food Friday, where we don't actually get fast food. I make something that is fast food like at home. This is an awesome way to still get that fast food fix because it's such a part of our American culture. Um, And I would say, you know, the world over, this is just fast food is, is definitely franchised everywhere, all parts of the world now. And when we are relying on them to be our main source of food, I think is when we start really contributing to this inflammatory response and we start contributing to our gut issues and we start contributing to just different health issues because our body does not recognize those things as anything other than chemicals and calories. But when we're giving our bodies things that it needs, we are way more apt to fight off a lot of these things that cause all this free radical damage and all these chemicals that are circulating in our bodies and our bodies have to figure out what to do with them. And depending on who you are, it may show up in different weird ways that you may never attribute to the food that you're eating. Interestingly enough, eating is one of the things that we do most And it's one of the last places that we look when it comes to any sort of health condition or concern that we have, because we think that a pill will fix it, but there's not a pill for every ill. Typically there's a pill for every symptom, but symptoms are just our body's way of sending and sounding alarms, just like that that inflammatory response that our systems have. Sugar is another one that can cause inflammation, if you eat it in excess. And we think, oh, I'm not just sitting down and pouring canola oil all every all over everything, or I'm not just sitting down and pouring sugar all over everything. We think of sugar as table sugar, but sugar is in so many things by so many different names. I'm going to get into that one in a whole other episode, but I just wanted to touch base on an excess of sugar can have this inflammatory response. It can cause an inflammatory response and seed oils that are in everything pretty much. So this week, I just want to challenge you to when you're going grocery, going grocery shopping or picking up something, turn over the back of that ingredient list And look at the ingredients and see how many times soy, corn, safflower, sunflower, peanut. um, Did I already say corn? I may have already said corn. And canola oil are showing up in the product that I'm purchasing in. Cottonseed oil is probably one of the most horrible ones that we can put in our bodies. I'll get into that in another episode. And things like corn oil, corn, soy, wheat, and sugar beets are the highest genetically modified ingredients in our country. And what that means is that the seeds that are planted have chemicals, chemical, they have a chemical addition, basically encoding by a certain company, by a couple of companies now, that have the insecticide and fertilizer wrapped in it. So it's almost like, oh, the seed that God gave us, this was awesome, but let's make it better by adding a bunch of chemicals to it that are going to change the molecular structure and the DNA of this plant. Let's do that. So that when we spray it with all these chemicals, it'll still give us yield and not die. So that is why I'm always talking about GMOs and all of that stuff. So we're taking in all of this stuff on a regular basis. And the more that we're eating things that are ultra processed, that are super man-made like foods that are through a drive through always deep fried or coated in this or preserved for nine months on a shelf in a grocery store that are no longer foods that have life in them because they can sit there forever without mold. Mold is actually proof that something is alive, believe it or not. Anyways, getting, you know, you can turn over a can of soda and there are sodas now that have canola oil in them 
or some or corn syrup in them. All of these things are highly, highly processed, genetically engineered or modified. And it is so important that if we are going to feel well and be well, it's super important that we at least recognize what we're taking in. So if you are wondering, what do I cook with? What should I even be eating? Two of the oils that I absolutely love to cook with and to even pan fry with are organic, unrefined coconut oil and avocado oil. These oils don't go through this process of being bleached and having chemical solvents added to them. They're also much more stable on a molecular level, which means that they won't cause oxidative stress in the body, which we've all heard are free radicals. Free radical damage can cause so many issues in the body from inflammation to diseases and the beginning of the disease process. So we want to keep inflammation down. And many times when people think of anti-inflammatory diets, they, they miss the point of what we're eating on a most consistent basis is what affects us the most. And if we're eating a lot of packaged foods, a lot of foods that have these, you know, seed oils added to them and and or are from a fast food place that are deep fried, things like that, we are going to have that those free radicals. And if we're not eating whole foods that can mitigate that, so things like blueberries for their antioxidants or, you know, green leafy vegetables for the phytochemicals to help with inflammation in the body and to um, lower inflammation in the body, we're literally causing a toxic load to our bodies that will result in inflammation, which results in pain and other issues. And I truly believe that the information of what we're eating, what it's doing in our bodies, or what it can be causing is so much closer to getting to the root cause of something than just throwing, you know, different more chemicals at something, even though all chemicals are not bad, but throwing more of these over-the-counter things to suppress symptoms. And that's really what we're doing more times than not. We're suppressing symptoms. But suppressing something does not mean that we have healed anything, nor have we gotten to the root cause, which means those symptoms will continue and persist and become chronic. I want you to be well And I just want to encourage you to just, you know, educate yourself about what you're taking in. It's something that I'm, you know, consistently trying to do myself. And I hope that, you know, if anything, it just makes you more aware because most of the time when we have a problem, we have to first know that we have a problem. We first have to be aware of it. And I just want to make you aware of all the different things that can be causing some of the symptoms to show up that you may be experiencing. I am not a doctor and nothing on this podcast is to treat, cure, or diagnose any medical condition. Always speak to your doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm just someone who wants to encourage you to become your own health and wellness advocate. If you enjoyed this episode, I would absolutely love for you to share it review it on Apple iTunes because it helps other people find the podcast and it lets me know which episodes you've enjoyed, which ones you want to hear more of. And as I am on my wellness journey and continuing, you know, the education side of things and, you know, personally just adding some of these things to my family's life and ours, as I learn, I'm just here to share those things with you in hopes that you can leave a different legacy than you may have been left when it comes to your wellness or to just put the foundations of a healthy living um, and wellness legacy for your family. So until next time, your life matters, what you do with it matters. So what will you steward well?